This right here is the ViewSonic XG270QC, I think. Some of these monitor names. This is a 27 inch 1500R curved 165 hertz monitor and you can do a lot with it. We're going to talk about value, we'll talk about the panel itself and whether or not you should buy it. Stay with me. Corsair's 5000 series cases provide exceptional airflow and plenty of mounting space for up to dual 360mm radiators in multiple locations. The sleek aesthetic will complement any build and the variety of models offered will cover multiple PC budgets. If you're looking for a mid-tower that pretty much does it all, consider the Corsair 5000D, 5000D Airflow, and 5000X IQ variants via the link below. All right, so here is what you're gonna get in the box. First up, I just opened this, the AC adapter. Uh, it's external, so you're gonna get this fat brick to deal with. I kinda don't like those, but uh, it is what it is. This is a USB cable here. This is for the additional USB ports underneath the monitor. Looks like you get a, this is a display port cable. I'm assuming 1.4 capable. And then you also get the other side of that AC adapter here. This plugs directly into your wall. Uh, so you're only gonna get display port, uh, a display port cable. You're not gonna get an HDMI cable in here. It looks like the monitor stand though is Pretty beefy. So if you recall from our PX2, I think it was a 277 video, that monitor has very similar specs to this panel here, uh, but that monitor didn't come with a very complex stand. I think it just stood still. It might have pivoted a bit, but uh, you can see this stand does a lot more. I believe it pivots, it also rotates, and can be slid up and down. All right, so this here is the base of the stock monitor assembly. I believe the stand just slides in like so. Whoops. It's pretty heavy. This is actually an all metal construction, which is nice. It's not plastic. It doesn't feel cheap. It feels very sturdy. Uh, I'm going to swing it around here so you can see there is a uh, little screw there. You can twist. It is captive. It doesn't fall out. And I believe that's pretty much it for the stand. So tool this assembly, which is nice. Got a bit of plastic back here. And right, this here is the panel itself. Now you can see that curve, it's a 1500R curve. Uh, so it's its pretty defined. It's not as sharp as 1000R, but uh, it'll do. We're gonna slide this in. I think it just clips at the base. Yep, there we go. It's already locked in, totally toolless. This is uh, one of my favorite monitor stands that you get included with a monitor. It's actually really impressive there how easy that was to set up. I'm gonna pull off again some of this plastic quite a bit of it. So you can raise and lower the monitor. You can swing it left or right, and you can tilt it up or down. So quite a decent amount of flexibility, this included monitor stand. Now as for connections, we've got starting from the left, micro USB. We have two HDMI 2.0 ports and a single DisplayPort 1.4 port. There is a headphone jack down here and three USB 3.0 type A ports. Now on the very bottom, there is a dedicated power switch. This is gonna be on the bottom right of the panel. Not sure what this button does yet. This might be an input selector or mode selector. Uh, and then toward the middle here, we have our little, uh, it's our little joystick. Uh, so this will allow us to navigate through the OSD. I like seeing this. It just keeps the button clutter down here. Uh, just very minimal. It's not confusing. Which button am I pushing? This keeps it all in one place. ViewSonic has implemented something called Pure XP, which I was a bit skeptical of at first, but I went into the OSD here. Uh, you can see it's very simple to navigate through. And all you need to do is go to the display tab and you're just gonna scroll down to Pure XP. Swing on over to the right. I like normal. If you start doing things like extreme or I'll put on ultra, you can see how much darker the screen gets as a result of this. But the reason why the screen gets darker is because they're using backlight strobing to get rid of some of that blur. It's essentially motion blur, it's what it is, um, but it is pretty prominent in this panel when PureXP is turned off. However, if you place it on the normal setting, you don't lose much at all in terms of uh, display uh, brightness and you get a heck of a lot more clarity in those fast moving images. Now as for ghosting, this monitor actually uses VA technology, which is something we didn't disclose up front because I wasn't actually sure what technology was being used. Um, just a heads up, if the monitor box doesn't say that it's an IPS panel, it's not an IPS panel. I mean, that's something they're usually gonna advertise right on the box. Uh, VA is more or less like, it's like the, 
the somewhat cheaper alternative to IPS. It doesn't really sacrifice too much. Sometimes VA panels have slightly better contrast ratios at the expense of slightly worse color reproduction, but they're, they're, the, the trade-offs are fairly small, and some VA panels are actually really good, better than some IPS panels I've, I've seen. But uh, anyway, as for this VA panel here, it's suffering quite a bit from ghosting, and ghosting is basically the remnant or multiple remnants of previous frames lingering on screen. So behind each of these UFOs, you can see a tail, and that tail, depending on how bad ghosting is, could be long or short. The bad ghosting on a panel results in longer tails. If you have minimal ghosting to no ghosting at all, uh, then you shouldn't see any tail at all as this UFO slides across the screen. Now in this case, it's pretty bad. You can see the tail is fairly long. I've tested multiple VA panels over the years and this is just something I've kind of noticed. It's just one of those traits that you have to deal with when you buy a VA panel. Doesn't matter if it's an expensive one or a cheap one, ghosting will 9.9 .9 times out of 10 be there and it will be pretty obvious. And by the way, if you're wondering, Pure XP, that, that backlight flickering tech baked into this panel does not address the ghosting issue. It's a separate issue that that's trying to fix here. So uh, you shouldn't leave it on or off if you're just worried about ghosting. Uh, if you want a smoother image overall, I recommend at least Pure XP in the normal preset. Next up, I wanna check for dead pixels. I always do that just because, um, look, if I'm getting dead pixels in my review samples, then chances are you might see one too. I see something right here. There's something. I'm going to put my mouse over it, see if it disappears. Oh, no, it's just something dirty on screen. Okay, I should have known. Is it, uh, no, no. Yeah, most of this stuff is dust. I thought we had dead pixels on our hands, but uh, things actually look pretty, pretty good. We're going to swing on over to black now. See if we see any stuck pixels. Maybe pixels stuck wide open. I don't see anything. Just making sure this is all dust here. That's why I'm touching the screen. Okay, uh, let's swing on over to red. Any sub pixels that are stuck? I don't, I don't see any. This looks really good. This is like the first panel in a good while that I've uh, had pretty much past flying colors in terms of dead and stuck pixels. All right, looking pretty good. And lastly, blue. I'm looking, folks. I'm not seeing anything. Maybe that's why they call this the uh, the Elite, the ViewSonic Elite series. These panels look like they have been QC'd fairly well. So uh, yeah, so far, so good. Now it's time to check for backlight bleed. The only way to do that, turn off all the lights. So, Kyle, don't get scared now. All right, I'll turn on the nightlight for you. You don't, uh, you don't freak out on me. All right, so now we're gonna sit pretty much right in front of this panel. I'm gonna show you guys some B-roll right now. I do see quite a bit of backlight bleed to the bottom left. Uh, there's, a, there's actually quite a bit of it scattered across the entire base of the panel, it looks like. Uh, there's a tad bit of it on the top right, maybe a bit more to the left. Um, it's there on a very dark scene. Maybe you would, you would notice it. It's not super bad. I've seen much worse, but it, you know, it, it is here. So keep that in mind. By the way, Kyle, here's your nightlight. You get two RGB strips included in this uh, ViewSonic Elite panel. That's kind of funny. I mean, it's a, it's a unique place to put these. I've mostly seen them at the rear, but you don't get to see those unless you have like a wall right behind your panel. Um, but I kind of like the fact that these shine down. Maybe it lights up your peripherals. That's something I didn't expect. This monitor has a somewhat decent speaker setup. I'm not sure if it's stereo speakers. I'll put a little note somewhere in the video if it does. But I'm gonna go ahead and play some sound for you. I'll let my lav mic pick it up. It's, it's not too bad. I've heard so much worse than this from most monitors we've reviewed. Here we go. To change things up just a bit, we've uh, put together a few fairly expensive builds in Q4 2020. Figured we'd throw together a fairly affordable budget system that's gonna pack a heck of a punch. Not bad, quite a bit of dynamic range there. Bases are pretty clear and uh, yeah, most importantly, it's not trebly and sounding like you're speaking into a 100 foot long aluminum tunnel. Now in terms of color reproduction, ViewSonic really hit the nail on the head here. DCI-P3 coverage 90%, gonna give you some of the best looking colors in a VA panel that I've personally ever seen. Um, usually when we're talking about accurate colors, we're talking about an IPS uh, panel. Uh, but like I said, VA often trades blows with IPS in a lot of respects. And in this case here, with this particular panel, I'm not sure who manufactured this VA panel, 
but it is incredibly sharp. It looks really good. The colors are very um, natural looking, but still deep and vivid. And that's what you want. Now I did hint at the OSD a bit earlier, but I'm gonna walk you through each of these tabs here. So first up, you have your game mode to select from different uh, color profiles. Uh, next up, we have display. Here you can enable that pure XP uh, attribute that we discussed earlier, as well as HDR. This panel supports HDR 400, uh, as well as FreeSync Premium Pro, which is nice. You can select your inputs. You have your two HDMI ports, as well as a display port. Uh, and then we have an audio adjust. So remember those built-in speakers sound really good. You can change the volume of those speakers or just mute them outright. And then set up menu, you can change language and other, well, fairly boring stuff. So all in the XG270 QC would make for a pretty sweet gaming panel. Again, the slightly curved nature of this display makes it somewhat immersive for a single player uh, on this panel. It's great for content creation as well, thanks to the fairly accurate color reproduction. We get this actually fairly accurate. It's kind of a it's kind of a disservice to what this panel actually is. The colors look really good on this display, and I know the camera is not doing it justice. You just have to see one of these in person if possible. Uh, so content creation, this panel is definitely good for that. Um, although pairing two or three of these together, you have to keep in mind that these are curves. So you kind of have to set it up uh, to complement that curve. Uh, and then, I mean, anything else, like if, you, if you're just wanting to use this panel as like an occasional gaming panel, but then at the same time, maybe run some Twitch streams, this and that. It's certainly capable of handling all of those more basic tasks, at least from a monitor's perspective. Uh, but what this really is, in essence, is a professional gaming panel. I would be 100% confident using this uh, for any professional gaming setup. And if I was being really picky, I would say that the asking price is actually fair. So this monitor costs 450 bucks. And I know, that's, that's, that's kind of a tough pill to swallow, especially given the fact that we just reviewed the PX277 Prime, which was priced a little over $300, and is pretty much the same panel, save the curved aspect. Colors aren't as good, but the colors in that panel are still really good. Uh, it still suffered from ghosting, but that panel was an IPS panel. I'm actually using two of them in my personal setup right now because they are that good for the price. I like to practice what I preach, at least where I can, especially in my own personal setups and uh, the different tech that I use. So th this panel is, like I said, it's one of those that you, you kind of have to rationalize in your head before buying because there is so much else out there that is competing with this panel in this space. Now I don't have a sample from every manufacturer of monitors out there that produces a 165 hertz 1440p display. I haven't looked at all the different prices out there, but I can tell you that ViewSonic's ask here is at least somewhat justified just from the pure XP aspect alone. I know that's mainly software driven, but it looks really good and it makes a huge difference, uh, especially in those fast paced games. So if you're playing Modern Warfare, you're playing CSGO, if you're playing F1 2020, a lot of those are games that I play, um, you're gonna benefit from enabling pure XP, at least somewhat. I like the normal preset going as high as ultra is a bit extreme, uh, but it's nice to have those extra software features. And that's one of the reasons why I think you're paying a bit of a premium to buy this ViewSonic Elite monitor. I will say to counter that argument though, that it is obviously a bit more expensive than some of the other monitors that appear very similar on paper. Again, that PX277 Prime is just really hard to beat for the price. If I had to choose and I was spending money myself, I would probably pick the PX277 Prime just because I'm not as concerned about how crisp and how fluid my gameplay is. Um, it still looks good enough on the Prime to um, you know, make me omit or overlook, I should say, the additional 100 to 150 bucks I would spend for this here. That's not to say ViewSonic hasn't done a great job. I just think the price could be a, a, just a tad bit more competitive. Remember though, you're getting a very versatile monitor stand. So if you're gonna use the included monitor stand, this is one to definitely consider. You're gonna get that curved panel as well, and you're gonna get those software features that really allow this monitor to stand out from the pack. Yes, it's VA, but it's an incredibly color accurate VA panel. Yes, it suffers from ghosting. Yes, it suffers from backlight bleed. So does the PX277 Prime. Most monitors out there are going to have at least one or two trade-offs. For the price, it's not bad but it's not really the best. With that, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. Consider subscribing. You can find this monitor down below. If you want to check it out, we'll try to link Amazon and Newegg, and we'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.